All right, everybody. So I just made this video and I was thinking about editing out the first part because it's kind of a shit show, but I decided to leave it as a reminder to always prepare before you train. Take time to put your leash on and get all your tools ready and set yourself up for success because I did not do this at the beginning of the video and it turned out kind of funny. So if I wouldn't have been a trainer, someone probably would have got really discouraged at the first part of this video because it's frustrating and it's chaotic but <laughs> if you had put your leash on before the dog came out of the crate and before you tried practicing this it would have been a lot easier so it's a mistake that i made and thought was funny but it could be something that potentially discourages an owner from continuing to try training so i wanted to leave it in there and add that little piece in and just one more thing before i jump into the video i know this is a really long video but try to stick around till the end because about three quarters of the way through i kind of go in detail about why this is a good thing and why you need to teach it to your dog and there's a lot of good little bits of information in there so Try to stick around for the full 15 minutes if you can, if you have time, and you might just learn something. All right, I'll let you watch now. Dog training, what it looks like. Okay, now I've got the leash on. She's obviously engaged with this toy. We're playing. She's got the e collar on her working level. What I'm gonna do is I'm tugging this toy. It's fun, it's active, it's alive. We're playing. And then I'm gonna say out. I'm gonna put pressure on the collar, take all of the pressure off. Good. So, what I did there. I put the leash on so that she couldn't pull away and continue to put pressure on this. I've practiced this a lot with her, so she's starting to figure it out. But I'm layering e-collar pressure. No, don't you do it. Leave it. Good. She like barely wants the food right now because she's, nope, right there, nope. Me trying to narrate and do this at the same time is probably pretty hard for her. She threw the food, she doesn't want it. I'm just gonna do it again, narrate afterwards. Okay, good girl, good girl, get a Zoe, 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 get a Tension goes off. Pressure goes on the e-collar till she drops it. So it's not fun anymore. So pressure's on the e-collar. It's on a low level, so she doesn't really care that much. So I'm gonna start crawling up on the e-collar. Good. Okay. <laughs> this isn't normally something I do right here, but it's good lighting. goes on both collars until she drops it. Good. Okay. I immediately let her have it again as a reward. Also, that whining wasn't her. That's chronic back there upset that I'm playing with her and not him. Okay. But 
I like to do this with tug toys and then I can layer it over to a ball or something. Okay, so I want her to out, step on the leash, out, pressure on the e-collar. Sometimes too, because if I'm always telling her, good girl, Zoe, bring it back, bring it back. If I'm always telling her um, to out, this game isn't as fun. Then if she wins, I'm like, good girl. So by letting her win every once in a while on one of those power moves, it'll build her drive to want to bring it back and play tug more. So this is how I would teach a dog to, for one, out a toy. Like, girl, get it, Zoe to out a toy, but also how I would teach a dog to bring a toy back. So Chronic actually, believe it or not, did not like to play fetch when I got him. I had to teach him how to play fetch and I did that by playing tug. I'd keep doing this and having him, he'd want to play, he'd want to get it, get it over, get it over. He'd want to thrash it around. And then I'd let him take it from me and he'd want to keep doing it. So he'd bring it back and then that's after a while, I would out. Good. I'm gonna turn it up just a little bit if she goes after it again. I, once I tell her to out this toy, it's my toy. I do not want her to touch it. And she's doing very well with it, but I turn the e-collar up just in case she goes after it again so that I can correct her immediately on the right level if she does that which she's doing so good guys this i'm so proud of this dog <laughs> right there she got a correction so what this is doing is so many awesome things um i'm teaching her this is not her toy this is my toy that we play together with why do i want to do that well because a toy that a dog thinks it has ownership of that's how you get resource guarding that's how you get dogs that fight other dogs for their toy. That's how you get dogs that fight other dogs for their food or fight you for their food or bite someone when they go to grab something. So not only is it safer for the toy to belong to me and me to offer it to her and she can play with it with me, but it also is just making life a lot more fun for both of us because nobody wants to play with a dog that won't bring the toy back or that won't out the toy. So. Teaching this, this is something that I would teach every single dog. You don't have to use the e-collar. I'm using the e-collar to clean it up, but what you would do if you didn't have the e-collar, you'd have the leash on um, and you're playing with the toy, playing with the toy, and then you say out and you say it very loud and clear and you put pressure on the leash so that she can't back up and pull away and you take the pressure away from the toy. So if I'm pulling on the toy this way, I say out, I push it in towards her mouth and I pull the collar towards me so that there she can't pull back and put tension on the toy again making the game alive again and um and then I'm not pulling back making the game fun again for her so I'll do that again and I'm hoping this makes sense I'm doing a lot of things I'm using a toy an e-collar a leash my feet like there's a lot going on here so but I hope that I'm explaining well enough that you can get the concept of what I'm doing okay good girl hey Zoe you also, you gotta hype your dog up when you're doing this. There is a technique to playing tug. Um, for one, the tension always needs to be on the toy. So you'll see me pulling it back and forth like this. I'm not ever giving giving her her head with this. I'm not ever pushing it backwards, which her neck ends up like this. I always wanna pull towards me, back and forth, like this. And then, Good girl, good girl. And then I'll hype her up. Sometimes I'll go, get her, Zoe. Get her, Zoe. Get the floor. Get it, get it, get it. If your dog's not that into it, that'll help. But if you have a high drive dog, teach them this. I promise you, you will not regret carving time out to do this. So I want it back now. I'm going to go out. Good. 
turn it up. She goes after it again. Good, what a good girl. So Zoe here is a super, super high drive dog. Um, <laughs> she, and that's awesome because you can do so much with it, but if you don't do anything with a dog like this, this dog's gonna run your life. This dog's gonna be either neurotic or just <laughs> destroying your house. Um, there's a lot of bad things that can happen if you don't utilize a dog's drive and a dog's brains. So when I say drive, I mean that she is locked in on this toy. Nothing, and this dog is obsessed with food and she honestly like, she'll take food right now, but normally she'd be like scarfing this out of my hand and see she left some in there. So she has more toy drive than she does food drive which is good to know because if you've got a dog that's hooked on a toy like this, but they know the toy belongs to you, you're now the holder of good things for that dog and that dog's gonna listen to you because you might throw a toy. So with Chronic, he's also a very high drive dog and that's how I do a lot of cool things with him is I always just keep a ball on me. Um, with Chronic, I could probably use like a piece of cloth and he'd go after it. I could use water bottles, anything, anything that a, um, <laughs> that I have at the time. If I pick it up and I wave it around, he's locked in on it. I know he's locked in on me and he's not engaged with the squirrel or the kid or the car or whatever it is over there. Okay, good girl. So, being in control of your toys and using, these toys are not just toys, they're tools. Like, I do not, this toy does not get um, left with a dog because then it's gonna lose its value. I keep this toy with me, I keep it up, and when I want to play with it, I come out and I play with it, and we play it in a structured way. And that is how, good girl, so we get it. And that is how you're really going to um, get the most benefit, and <laughs> girl, Zoe, um, <laughs> you're gonna get the most benefit out of the toy, you're gonna tire out your dog, um, and you can actually have a good time with them. If she does another power move, I'm gonna let her have it, see if she brings it back. level and out. Make her give it back. Good. Ah, ah. Out. Good. I'm going to turn it up again just in case she does that again. So yeah, I'm out of breath, but this is how you teach your dog to out a toy, to recall or to bring a toy back to retrieve something. Um, and this is just overall how you do a lot of really cool things with your dog, so you should do it. Um, give it a try and tell me how it goes. Some dogs don't, uh, aren't that obsessed with toys like this, but you can build drive. And the way that I do that is, ah, that was a late correction, but she still got it. She's pretty responsive to my voice, but the way that you do that, she's super into it right now. And I'm just going to say, all done. And it goes away. So I kind of get her hyped up and then I put it away and that's going to build the drive for it. So if you have a dog that um, maybe likes toys, but isn't, hey Zoe, and now I'm going to make her calm down, down, down. I'm going to kind of force her into down so she can get over this good. I'm building an off switch with this dog. That's an on switch and that's the mode that she wants to be in all the time. And I'm going to build an off switch by also putting a down afterwards. So when I say all done, that means we are all done every single time. I say that every time I'm done playing with a toy, because otherwise with a high drive dog, you're literally going to have your dog always like, are you going to bring ball back up? Are you going to bring ball <laughs> down? Um, and you need, you need both. You need, you need the go, 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 but you also need the chill out. We're going to watch TV type thing down. Good. 
Um, so now I'm probably going to put her on a duration place and make her just lay and be calm for a while. Um, and yeah, that is all I got for you guys. So, hey, uh, uh, down. <laughs> Sit. Good. Down. I know. It's a lot. It's a lot to handle. It's a lot to handle. I know. Yeah, you ate it too fast. 